The difference between gender and sex. The, the terms sex and gender are closely linked, yet they are not synonyms. In the 1960s, has drawn the distinction between them. He suggested that the word sex be used to refer to the physical differences between men and women, while the term gender be used in connection to the behavior and cultural practices of men and women. Sex refers to the biological characteristics or natural biological differences between men and women. For example, the differences in the organs related to reproduction. A person's sex is biologically determined as female or male according to certain identifiable physical features which are fixed. Gender refers to the cultural socially constructed differences between the two sexes. It refers to the way society encourages and teaches the two sexes to behave in different true socialization. Gender identities and associated expectations of rules and responsibilities are therefore changeable between and within cultures. Gender power relations permit social institutions so that gender is never absent. The following are differences between sex and gender with respect to some attributes. Difference between sex and gender. Attributes. Definition of sex, biological or cosmological difference, definition of gender, social, not natural difference. Meaning of sex refers to physiological characteristics, while gender is refers to social, cultural expectations and actions. The effect of change of sex is difficult to change the sex when born as male or female, while gender can be changed since gender identity is determined by society. Aspect of role of sex is, throughout history and across cultures, sex differences exist, while gender is at different times in history and in different societies, gender rules are different. Aspect of policy of sex is, policies respond to sex differences in areas to do with the physical body, while gender is, policies can respond to gender stereotype and traditional gender rules. The concept of gender, sexuality, and development. Gender is a culture-specific construct. There are significant differences in what women and men are, can or cannot do in one culture as compared to another. But what is fairly consistent across cultures is that there is always a distinct difference between women's and men's rules, access to productive resources, and decision-making authority. Typically, Men are seen as being responsible for the productive activities outside the home while women. Sexuality is distinct from gender yet intimately linked to it. It is the social construction of a biological drive. An individual sexuality is defined by whom one has sex with, in what ways, why, under what circumstances, and with what outcomes. It is more than sexual behavior. It is a multidimensional and dynamic concept. Four main gender narratives can be identified in the development discourse. The women in development or WID approach, the gender in development or GED approach, post-structuralism theory, and the human rights-based approach or HRBE. Women in development or WID approach. In the late 1970s and early 80s, the WID approach became popular in the development field as a result of the concern that women were being left out of economic development processes. The approach focused on the inclusion of women in development as a tool to increase the economic and social efficiency at development processes. When applied to education, the WID approach is marked by an emphasis on expansion of education for girls and women, which is linked to economic growth and social efficiency. For example, WID advocates for investments in girls' education, citing increased societal benefits such as reduced child mortality rates, reduced fertility rates, and increased gross domestic product per capita. The WID approach is prominently featured in the concept of gender par parity, 
the notion that an equal proportion of girls and boys should be enrolled in and complete schooling. Gender and Development Approach, or GED. By the late 1980s, the GED approach came to the forefront. This approach sought to challenge road causes of gender inequality and increase women's access to resources and decision making. This approach focused on empowerment or increasing the agency of women and giving them the power to take control of their own lives, often through targeted trainings and workshops. This approach also emphasizes gender equity as an objective, which refers to the process of being fair to women and men and challenging policies that unfairly bias men or women. Post-structuralism and development Post-structuralism theories critique a number of development practices and methodologies, particularly the power relations perpetuated by concepts such as development, development assistance, and women in the developing world. These theories draw from post-colonial literary and cultural studies and assess the influence of colonialism on the development and conceptions of gender. Post-structuralist theories are concerned with questions of identity and view gender as a malleable form of identification rather than a fixed definition present in conventional development discourse. From the post-structural perspective, schooling is in part a process that should serve to acknowledge and critique set notions of identity including gender and marginalized identities. While post-structuralist theory is influential within academia and in various political movements that focus on the rights of marginalized populations, it has not greatly influenced government and non-government organization or NGO policies or practices. Human rights-based approach An overarching development approach that has been applied to education is the HRBE. It is based on the belief that education is a universal, inalienable human right that is interdependent with other basic human rights. This approach aims to ensure that all traditionally marginalized groups, including but not limited to girls and women, indigenous people, persons with disabilities, and linguistic and or cultural minorities, have access to education. After the adaptation of the Beijing Platform for Action at the 1995 United Nations International Conference on Women, the concept of gender mainstreaming was also widely adopted by the development community. Gender mainstreaming is a commitment to ensure that women's as well as men's concerns and experiences are integral to the design, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of all legislation, policies, and programs so that women and men benefit equally and inequality is not perpetuated.